here I am in Figma. I have three designs that our uh, amazing designers have created for us. If I hit export paywalls, I hit continue and hit export. And now we have three different paywalls. And then you can click on each one and it'll actually open it. We have a full-blown paywall in RevenueCat Paywalls. And this is really, really stinking cool. <laughs> There's this preview in-app button. And I can scan that QR code. And look at that. So we have our paywall rendering for real on the real device. Uh, which is pretty crazy. Hi, I'm Charlie Chapman. I'm a developer advocate here at Revencat, and I want to show you real quick a new feature we just released that's going to make it way easier for you to design and create multiple paywalls. When we released the big update for Revencat paywalls earlier this year, the way we described the editor was that it felt a lot like Figma, because most of your designers are probably using Figma to create your paywall designs in the first place. And then you go into the editor and it's pretty easy to create those same designs inside of our editor because it feels very similar. But we figured, why not cut out the middleman and us just do that automatically for you? So I'm excited to show you the new RevenueCat Figma plugin, which does exactly that. So here I am in Figma, and you can see I have three designs that our uh, amazing designers have created for us. And uh, these are, importantly, using auto layout in their design. So if I resize one of these, you'll see it resizes appropriately. Uh, and that's because it's using the, the auto layout feature of Figma so that things will adjust correctly. And if you've built a design using auto layout, then you've described exactly how it can be represented in native code, which is what revenue cap paywalls will actually render on a device. So we can just use that to create the paywall for you. So to show you how this works, uh, the first thing we're gonna need to do is go up into plugins and manage plugins, and then search for revenue cap. And you'll see the revenue cap plugin right there. And I can hit run. Now, I've run this before, which means I've actually set it up uh, with my project. So this looks a little different. You'll see this is already seeing my project. What you'll see will look like this. So uh, what you need to do is generate an API v2 key inside of your RevenueCat dashboard. The instructions are linked right here. And then you'll put that key in below. And where you'll find that, um, you can follow the directions and it's pretty clear. But if you're in the dashboard and you go down to API keys... You can see I've already generated one, but this is the secret API key section. So if you say new secret key, you could give it a name like Figma plugin and make sure you select V2 because that's the API that uh, this one uses. And then um, the access that you need to grant uh, this key is all of the project configuration permissions. So you can set this to read and write, and you can see that'll automatically set all of these for you, and then you can generate it. Um, I've, I've already generated it, so I don't need to do that. And then once you're in there, you can click show key and copy that key. And then back in the plugin, you just paste it right there. And then that will land you on this page. So now I'm on this page um, and I can actually export one of my Figma designs to, to a Revenue Cat paywall. So if I hit export paywalls, you'll see it gives me uh, some of those rules. So like I said, uh, you need to make sure you're using auto layout on every frame. And then this right here is talking about how you can map specific frames to revenue cat components or revenue cat paywall components. Um, and this kind of tells you what's going on, but the better way to look at all of this is to go into our docs. And if you go into the um, create paywalls page, there's a section on importing from Figma. And if we scroll down here, you'll see this table. And this table tells you exactly how you can map specific Figma objects into RevenueCat paywall components. Um, so texts will automatically, obviously, convert any text nodes into it. Um, images, uh, so like rectangles or vector objects, or obviously images, will uh, be created and automatically uploaded to RevenueCat to be used as an image inside of your paywall. Stacks are, are pretty self-explanatory, but then things like buttons. If you want something to be a button in RevenueCat, you need to name that frame exactly button. Or if you want it to be a package, you can name a package or purchase uh, a purchase button. And if you give it those names, then we will, when we convert it over to RevenueCat uh, paywall, we'll turn it into one of those components for you. I'll show you how that works here in a second. So if we look uh, over here and let, let's just look at this one right here. So uh, like I said, this is using um, auto layout. So like if I 
go down into this button and I move it, you can see it's, it's letting me put it inside of the layout in a different spot. It's not just random objects I can place anywhere I want. Um, and then if we look at this object right here, you can see we named it exactly purchase button. And then the restore purchases button is just named button because that's a button. And then each of these packages up here, um, the different products that you can purchase, those are frames that are called exactly package. So that's what tells the revenue cat, um, uh, Figma plugin, what this should be converted into. So pretty self-explanatory. So if I select this um, one right here and I hit continue, you'll see that we have one frame selected. And the reason it says that is because you can actually select multiple. So if you want to create uh, like one paywall and then duplicate it and make some tweaks and then duplicate it and make some tweaks because you want to run a bunch of experiments, you can do that. And then you can just select all of these. And now all three are selected and hit export. And you can see it's uploading all the images, converting those into frames, doing some magic, whatever that means. Uh, so this is actually sending everything up to Revenue Cat and turning them into Revenue Cat paywalls. And now we have three different paywalls and they were each created. Oh, they were each created with the, uh, with the frame names, which I, uh, very helpfully did not. Uh, change the number. So they all have the same name, but uh, it uses this name whenever it creates it. And then you can click on each one and it'll actually open it. So if we go to this first one and let's open it full screen, we have a full blown paywall in Revenue Cat paywalls. And this is really, really stinking cool. <laughs> if you've manually gone and created these, uh, the editor is very nice, but it's so much faster to just have it done automatically for you. So this is extremely cool. And as you can see, uh, remember we named this one uh, purchase button and you can see that this is an actual purchase button inside of inside of the paywall. Uh, and then the button right here, the restore purchases one is a real button and the action is restore purchases. Um, and then each of these packages right here have been turned into revenue cat packages. So this is cool. You can't use this exactly right now because we need to now, you know, it's going from a Figma design to something that needs to be rendered uh, as a paywall in your page. So there's some stuff you're going to have to update. So the first one is uh, each of these packages need to be actually linked up to a prop uh, product um, or, a, or a package inside of revenue cat. And in order to do that, the paywall actually has to be associated with an offering in the first place. So if we go back up to the top here, you can see right now there's not an offering connected to this paywall. So let's go ahead and pick one. This offering two is one that I've set up already. And it also has three different packages, uh, which makes this demo a lot easier. So now that I've done that, I can go into each of these packages and set it up um, with the corresponding package inside of that offering. So this one is the monthly one. So I'm going to choose monthly. This one is the yearly one. So I'm going to choose annual. I'm also going to make this the selected by default one. And then this one down here is uh, the lifetime. So let's do that. Cool. So now each of those are set up. And theoretically, let's see, I can save that. I theoretically could well, actually let's just hit publish and see. Yeah. So that technically will render. The problem is... Um, a lot of this is still hard coded. It's not dynamic the way that you'd want it to be. So if we go into this monthly um, package right now, the price is just hard coded to nine ninety nine, which is not what you want uh, because that's going to change depending on locale and everything. So let's change each one of these to a variable. So we're just going to go ahead and choose price. And these being hard coded is not a big deal because uh we know exactly that this is our, our monthly package because we just set everything up that way. And then let's do the same thing here and the same thing here, lifetime. Oops. Cool. All right. So now those are dynamic. Uh, you'll want to change this too. I'm not going to bore you with that detail. Um, and then this button also, so it says start your free trial, but not all these actually have a trial. So we need to make sure this is set up the correct way. Um, and the way to do that is to go into that text and this should actually say continue. And then the text field for introductory offer, that's what will show if the selected package has a, uh, introductory offer, which is what a trial is. So I'm going to change that one to start your 
free trial. Okay, cool. So now I think everything should work. So let's see what happens. I'm going to save that. I'm going to publish it too. Um, because I can publish it because that offering is not my default offering. So it's not like this is going out to real users immediately. And then let's do something cool here for how to sh see how this renders on a device. So um, I could run this in a simulator and select that offering and show it to you in a simulator, but I want to see it on a real device. So the way we can do that is uh, under preview, there's this preview in app button and that'll pop up a QR code. And let's open up my phone here. Here, let me pull, I got it mirrored in QuickTime for you. Let's open the camera and I can scan that QR code and look at that. So we have our paywall rendering for real on the real device, uh, which is pretty crazy. If I hit this restore purchases button, it, this is obviously a preview, so it's not real, but you can see it's, it's doing the restore uh, action there. Um, pretty cool. Now, one thing, let me reopen that. One thing uh, you'll notice though, and it might throw you off at first, is that if I tap these buttons, they do react because they're real buttons, but it doesn't look like it's actually changing the selection. And uh, in reality, it is. And let me show you why. If we go back into the editor here, these colors are all hard-coded right now. They're also not dynamic, just like what we were talking about earlier. So this one, you can see in our Figma design, we just had it set to say this one is selected by default always but in reality that's not you know what you want so we need to change uh this one to have its color um fill gone and only be there whenever it's selected so if we change the over to the selected state and then i pick you know it's kind of bluish color that matches uh matches what we were looking at earlier yeah there's that and Let's just make that color gray so it matches the other ones for now. Okay, cool. And then do the same thing for each of these. So go to the selected state, add a fill, and make it that kind of bluish, light blue color. This doesn't look very good, but you get the idea. And do the same thing for this last one. Uh, in the selected state, um, make the fill that bluish color. Cool. So now, um, I thought I changed that border to be a gray. There we go. Um, so now the selected state should change based on what's actually selected. So if I switch to selected or default, it changes. Same with this one. The reason that was highlighted by default is because that is the selected by default. So if none are selected, you'll see that one in the selected state. All right, let's save that and preview this one now. And hopefully we will see, I can't block the, uh, there we go. Hopefully we'll see now, look at that, the selected state changes. So, uh, and then the, the text down, down at the bottom is not changing, but that's because we never updated that. So like I said, there's some work obviously you'll need to do to make this make sense as a paywall. But what's really cool is uh, how quickly we just created a pretty complicated uh, design from Figma, brought it right into paywalls, rendered it on a real device, and we could start iterating and playing with that uh, as we go. So hopefully uh, this is exciting to you as it is to us. Uh, you can get to the plugin straight from the Figma plugin page. Uh, just search Revenue Cat, and you can find all the docs on this on the paywall docs at revenuecat.com. As always, let us know what you think.